Now, we're still in the massive Sontral. The really big climbs of the Alps and the Pyrenees are yet to come. Nonetheless, there are eight climbs to get over on today's route, and in years past, this would have been exactly the kind of stage that would have been the launch pad for victory in the King of the Mountains competition. In fact, in the last two tours, it was exactly this stage. In 2010, Anthony Chateau got into a break on stage nine, swept up most of the points over the climbs along the way to take the polka dot jersey, and then pretty much held on for the rest of the race to win the competition. Two years ago, at stage nine, saw Franco Pellizzotti doing pretty much the same, mopping up the early points while the overall contenders were saving their legs for later, and eventually snagging the spotted one for himself. And good for Pellizzotti and Chateau, but they clearly weren't the best climbers in those races. More like compulsive uphill shoppers manically collecting loyalty card points while more talented riders were being thrifty and saving their energy for the climbs that really mattered. Well, this year, and not for the first time, the race organisers have tweaked the rules to try to make sure that the bloke standing on the podium in Paris in the best climber's jersey is actually the best climber. There used to be points down to the 10th rider over the summit of the Tour's most difficult climbs. That's been cut to the first half dozen. But more significantly, where there used to be double points on the final climb of the day, where a kamikaze attacker might lead the race, then crash and burn before the finish, this year there are double points only for the Tour's four big summit finishes. Luzardi Den, Plateau de Bay, the Galibier and Alpe d'Huez. Still, today's route does have that kamikaze look about it. And unless he's got the legs to join today's escape, he's unlikely still to be leading tonight because there are more King of the Mountains points on offer on stage nine than on the previous eight put together. Once they leave Isuar today, the riders will spend the whole day either going uphill or down. There's very little flat on the course. Eight official climbs, three second category, three third category and two fourth category, including the final nasty kick up to the finish in San Flor. The last time the race came here, incidentally, was 2004. Not stage nine, but stage 10. Otherwise, it fits the chances template perfectly. It was a post-drug suspension Richard Viron who ate all the points, taking a solo win to the delight of the French and the mixed disgust and indifference of everyone else as he laid the foundation of his seventh and last polka dot jersey win. Of course, he was a true climber, at least Richard Vironc, although whether he was a true sportsman or not is a much murkier area for debate. And one we're not going to get into because we've got cycling to show you. So let's get on with stage nine. I wouldn't like to be sitting in the peloton on a day like this because these are very hard roads in this part of France. Uh, the road surface is always extremely rough and it's uh, very difficult to get your bike actually even going along. Fortunately, it's not as hot as it can be in this part of the world. It can very often go up to 90 or 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And when it does, the tar starts to melt. And in the uh, cycling jargon, you feel as if the uh, glue is on the outside of your tyres, not on the inside. And it makes a real mess of your socks as well. Now, what's Voikler doing here now? Well, something's happened back there. What the cars, what's going on? Well, I'm not quite Somebody sure. Somebody stopped, I think. Yep. A little bit of chaos. Just having a quick look in here. In fact, there's been a oh, crash here. Oh, goodness me, that hit the side of the car. Gee. And that was the French uh, television car going by him there. Well, that was ridiculous. Well, they've got to get themselves back together, and uh, that car came in and just whacked that rider. Normally, the car drivers in the Tour de France are experienced ex-professional cyclists, but that is bad luck for the uh, bad luck for the breakaway. And uh, tell you what, that guy went down extremely hard, and that was Juan Antonio Fletcher. Well, you know, what happened to the motorbike when Nicky Sorensen, the champion of Denmark, was knocked off by a photographer's motorbike the other, the other day. He was sent off the tour completely, and I think the same might happen to that car now. Well, that was Hugeland who went uh, over the top of uh, Fletcher and ended up in the field. There's a little bit of discussion going on here. They're calling for a medical car to come forward. These three riders now have been... Uh, let's have a look at it one more time. That... that, oh, that. Oh, that was a, that, well. He's been caught in a wired fence there, so he'd be ripped to pieces going into that fence. Johnny Hoogland. Yeah, what happened there was the, the, the team car was coming by. There was a tree in the side of the road. The tree, the car tried to come around the tree. Should have actually hit the brakes of the situation like that. And that is now Juan Antonio Fletcher. Phil, I wonder if he can get himself back into this race. And that is very unfortunate. No further crashes to report, thank goodness. Just a bike change for Philippe Gilbert, and not the quickest either. Nonetheless, he got back to the main field, and as we rejoin commentary, the three-man front group have a lead of 4 minutes 43, which would be more than enough to put Thomas Werkler into the yellow jersey. 
Amayo Jean, I think now, at uh, coming up to the five kilometres to go, is a foregone conclusion now. Four and three quarter minutes, take off one and a half. He'll be the Mayo Jean by three minutes yeah. and 13 seconds. That's a big lead in the Tour de France. It's a huge lead for a man who is having his probably his best ever professional cycling season there, Thomas Vokler, with eight victories so far. These men are not going to lose a minute for every kilometre left towards the finish. They might lose maybe a minute if somebody else comes to the front and does the pacemaking. Last time I got a glimpse, the team who were prepared to assume the responsibility of setting the pace was Cadell Evans' team, BMC Racing, had nearly all of his men leading the pack. Cadell Evans is actually riding this Tour de France field more as a leader of the Tour de France than some of the other contenders. Absolutely, but he's a totally different man this year. He's my favourite to win the Tour. We'll see how he progresses. Anyway, he continues. He's looking now for the last climb. He's getting very close to it. Another two kilo less than two kilometres to the climb. That'll bring him up into San Flor. He cannot take any time out of the front. He cannot think of winning the stage, but he can think of pulling on the Mayo Jean tonight. For him, it's all about time. It's not about the victory of the stage, but don't discount him on trying to win the, the, the stage if he can. I know he's uh, put a lot of effort into the success of this breakaway and keeping as much of that time advantage as possible, but he's the most prolific winner of the year, and yep. he may well still have that little bit of a kick left to get across the line ahead of Sandy Kassar, who actually, uh, over the last few kilometres, has probably only been putting in about 15 to 15 to 17 percent of the effort. I think Sandy Kassar's playing a rather clever ruse here. Well, if they don't get themselves organised, uh, they'll be looking at a five-minute time gap once they get to the top of the climb in San Flor. Yellow jersey Tor Hushoff now, Phil, I think, has resigned to the fact that he's lost that golden tunic and probably not the way he expected to. No, and uh, just patting his teammates there for making the effort to try and bring it back, but it was to no avail. It was too late. The chase was taken up too late to bring them back. This makes two days now where the breakaways have outwitted the peloton. In the distance, on top of the hill, is the town of Saint-Fleur. There it is. We finish right up far right there. We climb right round the, the cathedral on the right. It is a very steep bank that we climb up. And it's only fourth category, but it doesn't really matter now because right on the top is the finishing line. It's a nice wide road, about uh, seven metres wide, but it is, as you said, Phil, 1.6 kilometres long for an average gradient of 6.1%. And they're very lucky because the finishing straight is 130 metres of flat. Yes, it is. They just rise out the bowels of the department of the Contel to race along the top, round the square. Sunday in the centre of France, the arrival of the Tour de France. A Frenchman is going to pull on the Maillot Jaune, but will a Frenchman win the stage? The odds are 2-1 to one here. Well, the odds are 2-1. to one. Sandy Cassar, very clever when it comes to finishing off in races. He's won three stages in the Tour de France on his career. Louis, Len Louis Leon Sanchez has won two, so too has Thomas Vokler. But Thomas Vokler has an added incentive at the end of today's stage. He is dreaming of getting back into that yellow jersey, a yellow jersey that he hasn't worn, Phil, since, as you said, since 2004. This is the climb. That hairpin left is the start of the climb now as Voikler looks at the other two. He wants to win the stage as well as take yellow. He's licking his lips, but you know, they will jump him. Somebody has got to go. There's a sharp right hairpin now right beneath the walls of the city. Then they'll slowly swing round to the left and come out into the square. And Voikler has got to push on, he can't wait. There's no finesse now. He wants every second he can take out of this breakaway. Well, he's riding, he really is doing a great job of work. He knows it's all about the time. I know he wants to win the stage if he can, but more importantly, he wants to give a big buffer for the yellow jersey to keep it for possibly a couple of days into the Pyrenees. He's looking over his shoulder. He probably feels that his biggest challenger will come from 131, Sandy Kassar. But watch out for a late move by Luis Leon Sanchez, because if he gets the jump and he gets 20 or 30 metres advantage, he'll be a hard man to pull back. He's a great solo artist. The, the sharp right-hand bend is just after this red kite, signifying one kilometre from the finish. And I think that's where Luis Leon Sanchez will put in his big attack as they come off that bend in the shadow of the chateau. And uh, it looks as though he's really very, very tired now, but he's still trying to force a reaction. He still wants to win the stage, Thomas Vokler. He wants to end it as a perfect day, and it's a big result for his new sponsors as well. But he's got to keep going. He wears the flashes on the cuffs of his jersey, a former champion of France, lost the title. He finished third, in fact, just before the start of the tour. Now, the right-hander is just ahead. 
He needs to ride round on the inside of the wall so he can force the moves to come through on his left shoulder because he wouldn't be looking around like this if he wasn't thinking of winning the stage as well as taking yellow. The clock very much on his side here. The gap is 4.48 at the moment. He's in the lead of the, of the Tour de France by three minutes tonight, but he still wants to win the stage as well. Well, he knows what this race finish is like. He's been here in the Tour de France when it's been to saint Flor in the past. He knows where to make the effort. It's going to be a big effort. The sprint will probably not start, Phil, until around about that 150 metres to go when they take the left-hander and finish into the alley of Georges Pompidou. They are really, really tired. Well, they might be after this day of racing here, but that's why they, they haven't gone early, because they're not confident in their own ability anymore. And look at this. Voikler has pushed them out in front. He's now riding behind them. He is going to attack these riders, and here he goes. That was a perfect move, and he's put it in. And Lance Leo, Luis Leon Sanchez saw his shadow, Paul, and got the kick on him. Well, he knew that was the moment to move, and Luis Leon Sanchez has got the power in those legs. Thomas Volkler could not get onto his slipstream, Phil, and it looks like the Spaniard is going to get himself another victory at the Tour de France as Volkler comes round. It's going to be a yellow jersey for Volkler. He dreamed and, of the stage victory. And in his favourite area here as Luis Leon Sanchez. He gets the victory. The clock will start now, and that's when we'll find out just by how much Thomas Voigt leads the Tour de France when we restart from Aurillac on Tuesday. And uh, Sandy Cassar, I think he really was tired. He, he's lucky to have hung on here to finish with the leaders, I think. Well, a great, a well-timed sprint there by Luis Leon Sanchez. He is a great rider. I remember when he won the Tour Down Under in Australia, everybody then, the Spanish press at that time, was saying this man will become the new Miguel Indurain because he's a fantastic individual time trialist. There he got only his second victory of the year so far as we go a little bit further out on the course. It's all about the time. It's all about how much this race is going to be led by Thomas Vokler. Not a question of whether or not he will lead. The time gap is what we're going to be interested in now. There is the melee of press around a Frenchman here, the first Frenchman to succeed. They didn't win the stage, but he's got his hands on the Maillot Jaune. This is now the battle of the fourth place, very important for the green jersey. Very interesting to see. Cadell Evans is interested in everything. Well, Cadell Evans sitting right on the wheel. Of, look at the gap. In fact, this race is completely splintered. Levi Le Leipheimer is in this group. Most of the heads of state. There's Alberto Contador in about fifth position. Over to the right-hand side, you've got Peter Velitz, uh, Tony Martin on the left-hand side in the white jersey of HTC. And further back down the road, well, it's not surprising really to see there's TJ Van Garderen. Yeah, TJ's lost his polka dot tonight, the American, and uh, Tor Hushoft has lost his yellow. The battle is being enacted here. Philippe Gilbert trying to finish it off now to get himself the fourth place. Cadell Evans happy to ride in his slipstream but not challenged. Gilbert sprints away here to get the fourth place. He's had a great day in the green jersey competition and all these points are going in the bank. He's getting himself quite a lead in that. But Cadell Evans will chase anything that moves. He's just dropped back one place here to Velitz as Velitz comes up, also finishing strongly. Watch out for Peter Velitz for a high finish in this year's Tour de France. Cadell Evans, Frank Schleck, uh, Tony Martin and uh, Andy Schleck, they're all over there but there is a time gap from there but the time clock is saying it to be about uh, two and a half minutes two and three quarter minutes tonight in yellow for Voigtler knowing that his long run in the race lead was over Torusov treated the last few hundred meters as the walk up the 18th fairway at Augusta well we'll get to the crashes of what happened on the stage, Luis Leon Sanchez took it comfortably from Thomas Verkler, who's taking the yellow jersey and won't have been overly disappointed. Sandy Kazar realised he was beaten and didn't bother. Once again, Philippe Gilbert led home the rest. Mark Cavendish's teammate Peter Velitz tried to deny him the points for fourth but couldn't. Then came Cadell Evans, Andy Schleck and Tony Martin. Now, until a couple of weeks ago, Luis Leon Sanchez was having a difficult first season at Rabobank. Then he beat Alberto Contador in the Spanish Time Trial Championships for his first win of the year, and now he has the third Tour stage win of his career. So Tourusoft gives way to one of the few non-winners who's held the jersey for longer than he has, Thomas Verkler, who kept it against all odds for 10 days in 2004. The stage winner Sanchez is up to second, 141. Cadell Evans is now third at 226. The Schlecks are getting closer as a family, separated by one place and eight seconds. Then it's Tony Martin, Peter Velitz and Andreas Kluden. It's impossible to me, for me to keep it uh, 10 days like 2004, but uh, 
One thing is sure is that tomorrow I can keep the jersey because it's a rest day. Now, the one bigger talking point at the finish than Verkler's yellow jersey was this piece of spectacularly poor judgment at the wheel of a French TV car. Swerving to avoid a tree instead of braking to avoid an accident, clipping Juan Antonio Fletcher, who hit the deck, and sending Johnny Hergland flying into a barbed wire fence. At the finish, the occupants of the car looked like they were already rehearsing the role of defendants arriving at court. While in a group that came in over 16 minutes down, were the two victims, Juan Antonio Fletcher, and right at the back, the new king of the mountains, Johnny Hergeland. From Hergeland, there were entirely understandable tears on the podium as he took the polka dot jersey he might never have lived to put on if he'd hit one of the fence posts instead of the wire strung in between. It's horrible, I can blame everyone, but I think no one do this on purpose. I think the people in the car will have a very big guilty feeling and they will for sure apologise to me and Pesce who came to me and he he apologised and it should not be happened but it's always possible something happens like this and nobody, I can nobody blame for this. It's, it's a horrible accident and I was in it but I just say to Fletcher, I say we are still alive and Weiland died in the crash. I have three, three this kind of uh, itches, so I go to the hospital. I think uh, I get 30 stitches or something. Thank you, thank you, John. Thank you. Oh.